What's up everyone? Kara Corey, registered dietitian. Welcome back for another physique update. For those of you that are new here or just joining me, welcome. Be sure to stick around a little bit, hit that subscribe button. And those that are longtime followers here, thank you for coming back to the channel. We are in week three now of my mini cut. So I wanted to do a brief review for you guys as I have been doing. You're gonna see some updated physique footage from early this morning of how things are looking. And week three, I feel like it was it was a week where I thought I was going to like foresee, see like major drops in my weight all week. Um, but I'm still having some fluctuation in my weight, which gave me like a little mental freak out for a second. And then I was like, calm down, Kara. When I look back at my history of any time I personally have dieted or entered a weight loss phase, this is very, very typical of not only my body, but most people's bodies. I'm not at a starting point where I even have weight I technically need to lose, right? I'm not overweight. I'm someone that's looking to get a bit more leaner, a bit more lean than the average person. That is going to be a little bit harder, right? So for me to expect to see huge changes, even though I want to be a bit more aggressive, it's just probably not the reality. So sometimes I even have to pull myself back in into the reality of what a weight loss phase truly looks like. So for this week, I'm going to share with you guys again my daily weigh-ins and my average weigh-in for the week, I believe is even lower than it has been the past two weeks, which does tell me things are moving in the right direction. I did have a low weigh in this week of 115.4. That was the lowest I had this week. And I do feel like as a whole, I am feeling a little bit leaner. It's just for me, it's hard to see in my progress pictures just yet, but I do feel like I can see my abs coming out a bit more and my upper body, which is typical for me. My stomach leaning out first is very bizarre. It never used to be that way. So it's funny how our bodies change over time, but it feels like my stomach is like the first area to lean out. So my stomach and my upper back are usually what I'm seeing first to lean out. My lower body is always, she's always a bit slower, okay? I understand that about my lower body. Though That's where I just hold more fat and that's just how it normally is. Our problem areas are usually going to be the last places that we lose fat from. Just a reminder to myself and you guys, you cannot spot treat fat loss. So I can't just only target my inner thighs and try to work off that fat. It's just not how it works with fat loss. So you do have to be patient. You do have to just recognize that those areas that are your problem areas that hold more fat, they are going to take a little bit more time and consistency. So with thinking about all those things said, I am happy with where I'm at, how things are progressing. We always want them to progress faster than what they are. I think that's just the reality of it all. Um, but you know what? That's just not life sometimes, and that's okay. It's it's still important to keep kind of that balanced head on your shoulders during this whole process, which is more what I'm focused on doing, continuing to give myself grace and not beat myself up just because I'm not at a certain point on the scale just yet. And like I mentioned before, that's not my whole focus throughout this cut. A big part of this too is just feeling like I'm in a better routine and consistent pattern in hopes that assists in my anxiety levels that I've been struggling with a bit. And I do feel like it has, although I have to say my sleep this past week was a bit wonky. Like I keep struggling with my sleep just being in a pattern and that's mostly no one's issue except myself like I just haven't gotten myself into a great night routine yet and that can really set you up for success or failure for thir first thing in the morning and at night you need to have good routines and habits in place and as with anything the more consistent you are with it usually the better results you get so that's more of my focus moving into this upcoming week is focusing on my sleep and just making sure I am getting adequate rest 
and recovery. I think that'll wrap up my physique update portion. Let me know in the comments below if you guys want any more detail, less detail about how things are going, and hope you enjoy the rest of the vlog. Do you like my outfit? I do like your outfit. That's camo, it's your favorite. It is. And I like it because it's pink camo. Yeah, like I love this mauve like rose pink color. It's really pretty. And the other one's white, which we'll show you in a minute. There is a white one. I don't have this white set. I have the crop yeah. and the shorts. The shorts fit you. But this is like the smooth material that the um, the rose set was, like the little sparkly ombre. Oh, that's it's like super that smooth. very like soft, soft like buttery, almost like spandex feeling. Like there's a little compression. It just um, really like yeah, just feel smooth. You can't feel like any rough. But I love these sports bras because I feel like I could have done an extra small, but I just feel like they make my, I don't know, it makes my boobs look like it. See, I need underwear like that. I need underwear like that. It makes my wiener look bigger. <laughs> That's what my baby hands are for. <laughs> One arm rows. One arm rows. You're not seeing the whole workout, guys. Let's start on my left side. Bruce is mad he's not on camera. He's right there. Look at him. He just looked around you. He's I love it how he checks out other people at the gym. He's guarding. Like he literally just did this to see what someone else was doing. Making sure he's keeping everyone on point. <laughs> he's like, what are these people doing? Bend down. What's the bend down? You're too short. We should just make you stand on dumbbells. <laughs> So I think it should be common sense, even if a gym allows dogs in there, that like you don't bring your dog in unless they're well behaved, they're trained. Because people ask us all the time. How do you get to bring your dog in the gym? How do you get to bring your dog in the gym? And like, yes, this gym does allow dogs, but you have, It's also a gym. It's also a gym and like, there's people in here who maybe don't want your dog like running up to them or like jumping at them or a dog running around in circles like, your dog needs to be well behaved and trained. So, so now there's signs up saying you have to have your dog on a leash, which they said Bruce is fine off leash because yeah. he's legit. Like I'll he show you. Doesn't move. I'll show you where he is. Stay with me here, people. There's Bruce. What up, dude? What up, Bruce? Give him a tail wag. Give him a tail wag. Give him a tail wag. There you go. People have been stupid and just letting their dog run around and poop on the floor. It's like, who does that? What kind of scumbags do that? Right, Bruce Wayne? But I think it's funny because like people are like, how do you get your dog to just sit there and like be so well behaved? And like we put a lot of time and training into it. And worked with a trainer. And we worked from him from the start so that but he, he was. We got him at seven and a half weeks old. Yeah. Exactly, in seven and a half weeks, in one day, he was in this gym. Like the first day, like the day the day after we got him, yeah. you know, we had to drive, what, three, four hours to get him? Yeah. The next morning, he was here at the gym with us. Right, so I think that is important, because like he was familiar with this environment, with the space, with the sounds. Yeah. Like to bring a dog in here that's eight years old, it may yeah. be I know, we always get that, it's like, how, how do I get, get my dog to behave like that? And honestly, it's, if you already have an adult dog past 12 weeks old, or not even an adult dog, if it's missed that socialization period, it may never happen. And then, and then you, it's, can, you, you can try though. I mean, you can try, but usually at that point, it comes to working with what the dog can handle yeah. and working around his issues instead of putting him in issues where he's going to right. have. Setting him up. I mean, the, there is some truth saying you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. So I mean, it's kind of like, well, if you kind of screwed that up or didn't, not even screwed up, I don't want to say that, but didn't know how to properly train them when they're a puppy, it could be too late and you or, just got to work with them. Or if you've adopted, you may not, you, yeah, may you, not you may not know the history of what's happened to your puppy during that first 12 weeks of life or during the first however long of life. So, you know, the training, you can only do so much and work with it what your dog's like capable of and can exactly. handle. So we wouldn't put Bruce in this situation or other people in this situation if we weren't super confident as owners with our ability to control him, to control him and guide him and make sure he listens and respects us. If he didn't, I wouldn't be in here with this dog. Like I wouldn't do that to anyone else. Now, it's not now if you act weird, he is going to bark at you. 
and kind of be like looking like you he, he's not friendly with you. Like so if you go up to him and you're like this, he's gonna be like, What the fuck are you doing or to if, me? Like, your you're hands, gonna yeah, like, if, you, if your if, hands are like down. Just think of a dog like a person. If you go up to a dog like this, somebody comes up to you like this, what are you gonna do? You're gonna be like, What are you doing? All tense and everything. He like, he feeds off that energy. Most dogs do, but he is very He's very intuitive yeah. with that energy so, since he's got the guardian instinct. So if so he if like you're senses, weird, if you're like really weird or awkward around him, that he's probably gonna bark at you. Yeah, like if he hasn't seen that kind of weird, awkward behavior. Like when I was walking him on the road and someone just randomly pulled over ahead of us and like got out of the car, it was someone I knew. But Bruce was like, "This is this is weird." So he just woo 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 yeah. woofed at her. Which is which I don't want him. To, I want him to do that because. Who pulls, like when she's walking alone, somebody right. pulls over on the side of the road and gets out of their car. That's not normal. Right. He, he's doing his job. So Yeah, and I'm not going to yell at him or scold him because that sends him a mixed message when he's just barking and yeah. doing his job. So I redirected him. I, I turned him around and he continued to bark. So yeah. we went about our way. But that, you know. And ultimately, that's why we have him. He's supposed to be a guardian. I hope she right. You know, that's what he's supposed to do. Games. We're doing B I mean, roll for the Buff Bunny. People so. at the gym probably think I'm crazy changing out that's mid workout, but it's kind of nice to feel everything out and give you guys a really good review of how things feel and what I would wear them for or do or not. Do. Feel. It feels good. Like these are a very, these are like a tighter waistband. Like it's thick. It's thick. It's like a very thick like. You see your undies. Looks like you can't wear undies with these. Which is okay, because I think some of them, I prefer to not wear underwear. I like them. It's got like... Wait, don't see that. I love this top. This is like my favorite top ever. Okay. Yeah, and like I like it so much, I don't think I'd want to work out in it because it's so nice. But I love this like. Well, don't lift with your hands like that. I'm not going to. I'm just doing it for show. But I love like this kind of stone color oh. with like the. I just think that detailing is so pretty. And then the black. Do you get like people who are like shy that want to compete? Yeah. Like how do you how do they do that? That's obviously like like for the stage piece. Yeah, like if somebody's like all shy and like they gotta get over it. I know. <laughs> I know, but like how do you like how do you help them get over it? Well, I some don't. people just yeah just saying get over it is like. You tell me, hey, you should get in a good mood now. It doesn't work like that. Well, you, you have to know going into this sport that you're being judged on stage presence as well. So if you get up there and act scared and shy, that's gonna the judges are gonna see that and not place you as well. So the biggest thing people can do is number one, practice their posing like a lot, but number first get comfortable with how it feels on their own but then secondly start practicing in front of people yeah. like when i pose with people in the gym atmosphere and they're like i don't really want to put on my bikini though know, because people are going to see me okay we've got some work to do because you kind of have to let that go yeah because it's going to be like now like in a gym people might see you but people aren't going to stare because like that girl's in the bikini and they might yeah. look but then they're going to like they don't want to be staring the whole time, then they're going to be the weird creeper dude or the weird creeper girl staring at the person in the bikini. I, On stage, you have like an audience with like yeah. 100 plus people looking at you sometimes and judges looking at you. Yeah, and I think like you, like for me, I almost lose sight of the people staring at me in a bikini, but either way, like the adrenaline gets going. Can you even see the crowd with the lights? You, I, I never really could. I never really could see the audience. I just literally only saw the judges, but you get that rush of adrenaline and you don't want shyness to come through on stage. So like getting a group of people together that you can pose in front of would be really helpful. Like that was really helpful for me. When I was training for my first show, like 
we would pose and we would have people sit there like judges critiquing us and they would critique us and it would make me nervous but it gave me it made me feel well prepared to step on the stage to simulate that feeling as best as possible is going to help you with kind of relaxing. getting relaxing and also too like as many as many um, categories you can sign up for so if you're a debut then sign up for debut novice and open like sign up for as many categories as you can because then it gets you on the stage three to four times so like that first time you could be all nervous that, then you're like yeah. i fucked that up and you're like eh, almost, whatever i can go again and then you kind of just let it go exactly like almost all of my like first time clients who are in more than one category say the first time on the stage they felt really nervous but then they felt like they got it together towards the end and were really excited to go back out there the second time because it allowed them to kind of perfect it more you know and i felt that way myself too so it's nice if you can get out there more than once to kind of get a feel for things and 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 let go of the stage nerves and the shyness and just, you need to get over your adrenaline rush yeah that's she gets adrenaline rush and then he starts shaking. Sorry if I'm standing all weird and awkward, guys, but I'm taller than her. So I need to like stand all awkward so you guys can see me. Yeah, I get, it doesn't matter. I d honestly don't know how many shows I've done, but like this- Always shakes. It, and it's even when I'm and not nervous. And then you can't nervous. move right. Like I've had, the pl well, I've had plenty of times where I'm not nervous. I'm like ready to do this. But yeah, it's that adrenaline rush you get before doing something like, the, your whole body shakes and it just kind of overcomes you so it's honestly best to just so no caffeine probably a better probably no, have your caffeine when you wake no up no caffeine unless you're going to be a dud on stage but yeah usually i can get through it without caffeine and then too like if you do get the body shakes like just try not to focus on them don't let it like show in your face like i've had that happen where i'm like oh my god my whole body's shaking and i feel disappointed but if you like usually that's, you get your own head. Like don't don't focus on that. Focus on the fact that you're up there, that you've worked really hard. Like usually the shakes aren't taken away from you too much as long as it's not uh, excessive. As long as it's not impacting your entire like stage presence where you're just like where you get this like you got the shakes but then it shows in your face where you're like, ah, I'm scared to be out there. Thank like that's where you gotta fake it in your face. Okay? That's why I said you gotta fake it. You gotta fake it till you make it a little bit. Because not everyone is comfortable on stage. That's, I think that's where you see um, people with like dance backgrounds or like Do really good. stage performance. Any of that stuff where you've performed in front of an audience, they always excel on stage with their posing because that to them is natural like drama and easy class. and comfortable, right. But for folks like myself who never did any of that growing up, like even though I might be like a little ham and careful the, the camera. Huh? Just be careful. And like being in front of the camera, like it's I'm weird. I'm not used to performing in front of an audience. So that's that's something I'm not Maybe used to. What's up guys? As highly, highly requested, and no, I'm not just making that up. You guys have highly requested air fryer video recipes. So we're gonna get right into it. The beauty of the air fryer and why you need one is it's seriously idiot proof. Like you can't mess anything up unless you're cooking meat and you undercook it. That can be an issue. If you're truly nervous about your meats, use a meat thermometer to temp the inside to make sure you hit 165. But Honestly, that's the beauty of the air fryer. You can cook whatever you want in there. You can cook fresh, frozen, reheat stuff, makes it crispy, makes it tasty, and it's just another fun way to cook your food so that it tastes different and you enjoy it more. So I use the Philips air fryer. It works just fine, it's nothing fancy. So we're gonna get into a bunch of different favorites that we have to cook in there. And I hope you guys get some good ideas from this and have fun with it. So stay tuned for air fryer recipes with K and J in three, two, one. One meal idea we have here is throwing in a fresh piece of fish into the air fryer. You can do fresh fish or I've done frozen fish as well, but this is a fresh piece of haddock. 
And I've also got here some spaghetti squash that was also already cooked. But what's nice is you can take stuff that's already cooked and throw it into the air fryer just to give it that like extra crispy, nice texture if you do like stuff a little bit more crispy, which I do. I don't like like slimy soft vegetables. I want them crispy. So what we're gonna do is just using some Pam spray. That's what's nice about the air fryer. You don't have to use oil. You can use a spray and still get that crispy fried texture. We're just gonna do a little spray on the fish and the spaghetti squash. And then we're gonna season it. I'm using the Mrs. Dash tomato basil garlic. This is my favorite. And then we're also going to use some garlic and sea salt. So I'm just gonna spread that on top. And I'm gonna mix it around on the spaghetti squash just to kind of get the flavors in there. And I'm gonna flip over the fish and do the same to the other side. We're gonna spray it and season it. Just for a little extra flavor on the fish, we are adding a couple slices of fresh pineapple. It's amazing sometimes what just like something small to add to your meals can add so much flavor to it. So this is gonna be what's going in the air fryer. We're gonna set the air fryer at 400 degrees. I am going to add the fish and the spaghetti squash at the same time. That's a common question I get, but I am throwing them in there together and we're gonna cook it for a total of 10 to 12 minutes. All right, so the number one staple I'd say that we cook in the air fryer are turkey burgers. We get the 99% lean ground turkey and they're really easy to cook in the air fryer. What you're gonna wanna do is not throw the whole block of ground turkey in there. Go ahead and separate it out into four ounce patties is typically how we do it. So we usually do four at a time. That's gonna vary based on what size air fryer you have, but all we do is season them up. I'm using the same seasonings as earlier, tomato, basil, garlic, Mrs. Dash, and a little garlic sea salt on top. So we don't spray the air fryer or anything. We're just gonna put these babies right in there for anywhere from 375 to 400 degrees for 15 to 18 minutes. 18 minutes in the air fryer just does something so incredible to turkey burgers. It gets this like crispiness on the outside, but yet it still maintains like a juicy moistness on the inside of the turkey burger. I actually never was eating turkey burger when Jason would like cook them all the time on the stove and I was like, Bleh. it's dry and it's bland and I don't like it. These taste so juicy. But it's something about the, yeah, the air frying process. It gets it crispy on the outside. You do wanna make sure it's cooked enough on the inside, but it stays, it stays juicy, you guys. And like, who doesn't want like juicy meats? So it's that easy. We cook up four at a time. And what's nice about the air fryer is you can throw it in there, you walk away for 18 minutes and you can get other shit done. That's what I like. So next on the list is my starches. I like to either do squash in the air fryer, like kaboka squash, or I do potatoes. So I've already cut up some mini golden potatoes. Sometimes I will use oil on them, but today we're just going to spray them and season them and toss them in. People are gonna watch this video and be like, wait, that's your recipes? I know. Like, people are gonna see how easy it really is to use the air fryer. I'm always like mind blown when people are like, show me the recipe. Show and me like, the turkey, like, how, we got so many, show me the turkey burger recipes. Yeah, and Form like, patty, I guess the, the protein there. one I get, but like when I do vegetables and starches, like there's no rhyme or reason. I'm spraying it, I'm seasoning it, and then I'm putting, oh. You squirted a little bit. Little squirts. This one's a little different, it's an avocado coconut one. Um, Literally all the recipes are the same. They're the same. So if you guys want like other ideas, definitely check out my full day of eating videos because I have a ton of other ideas in there as well. We're just doing a few things up tonight. I think I want, you, should I spice beast it? Uh, do a little bit more on my kind? potatoes. The protein one. I got it for Okay. We'll do a different, we'll change it up and do a different spice Ooh, on my potatoes. On there might be good on something. Some of those and cook it. That, I don't know what, maybe not that. But that would have been good on, on your haddock. Uh, yeah. Cracker fish. Protein? Let's just show the YouTubes those. I know it's not relevant to air frying, but it is relevant. Um, every protein? time I catch the display, I, I flex my abs. 
I'm like, oh yeah, I'm wearing a crop, crop top. Okay, cauliflower crackers. If you haven't seen these yet, I've seen them on some people's social medias. They have the sea salt variety, and then they also have a cheddar variety. And they are a very light and crisp, crunchy cracker. You get a pretty big serving size at 44 crackers for like 18 carbs. Um, two and a half fat. Two and a half fat. I think they do taste like cauliflower, which I like the taste of it. I don't think it's something where you can't, if you hate cauliflower, you're not going to like those. But it is a fun, um, different, crunchy snack. And another way, like this doesn't have to remove carbs out of your diet, but what it does, what cauliflower is great for is it assists in getting more vegetables in your diet. So um, there are two grams of fiber in these guys. But if you want regular crackers, I love Kashi crackers. They have really good crackers Which with good is? nutritionals. Kashi, they have like a fire roasted vegetable one that's delightful. Mm. All right, so I'm gonna season my patats with patats. the spice beast protein seasoning. It's really, really tasty. So good. Um, I just wish they'd change their label. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the label, but like their spices are. Yeah, don't be scared off shit. by their label. Because their stuff is so good. Like, literally, I've... I look like, how far gone that is. I feel is. like they, like, pinch it, pigeonholed themselves with this label. Like, the yeah. hardcore audience. Like, a mom's her. not going to want to buy this for her kid. Right. But I'm telling you, it's delicious. Moms would stuff. love it. Moms would love it. It's so good. Zero fat, zero carb. Yep. 230 sodium for one gram, which is a fourth of a teaspoon. I am going to... I'm just fucking addicted to... Mrs. Dash, tomato, basil, garlic. It goes good on everything. So I'm going to throw the patats in the air fryer. Here's a little trick. Sometimes... Try one cold. No, thank you. No, they're wicked good. Try it. No, baby. I've had digestive issues. I don't want to... Good mm. luck digesting that today. Mm. Not cooked at all? It really? might, might be a little rough on the systems. <laughs> he spits it in the garbage. I don't want to have digestive issues. Um... But you if, you're, on there? if you're looking to save time, a couple things you can do is if you want vegetables cooked as well, I would layer the potatoes on the bottom and then I've got some asparagus, I've got tomatoes, I've got bell pepper. What I would do is the, t the potatoes on the bottom because they'll take longest to cook and then the veggies on top because you can just pull them out. The veggies don't take as long. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do them separate though. Okay. So we're just going to do the potatoes in there. What I do like to do, you don't have to, but I do like to open it up and kind of shake them, give them a little shakety shake. shake. And I like mine overcooked. So it's personal preference. We're going to pop these babies in 400. 400 degrees for about 10 to 12 minutes. Shocking. I'd say probably more like 15. 15, but the t we do the 10 to 12. So it goes ding, that's the other nice thing, it dings, and then it tells you, go over and check it, and if it's not at your desired crispness, you keep it cooking. Kara doesn't know how to take things out of the air fryer. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Out and then you dump it out. Oh. That's all you do. She's over there struggling, burning her fingers and Look, stuff. This was educational for me too. Bam. We're both learning You're stuff. You're done. You're done. You're done. You're fired. You're fired. That sun is in my eyes. Okay, our patats are done after 12 minutes. They look pretty crispy. How's that taste? Better than the raw one? Oh, you're eating my vegetables. So those are all good to go. I'm gonna set those aside. Next up, I usually, the great thing about the air fryer is cooking your vegetables in it. I feel like it makes it easier for me to eat vegetables. You cooking asparagus like that? Yeah. You cut it up. I, better cut I, it. You can cut it up or you can leave it whole. I did whole for two years. I cut it up now. Well, I'm gonna leave it whole. My favorite thing in the world are these sugar bomb tomatoes. Yes, amazing. And I leave those whole because they get juicy and they roast and they burst and they're so flavorful. You don't need to cut them. Oh. So, and then I've also got a uh, bell pepper. So again, not a lot different here. We're gonna spray it just a little bit. Just like every other thing we cook. I'm actually not gonna season these ahead of time. I'm just gonna season it after the fact, but the asparagus cooks super duper quick in there. 
Like four minutes, five minutes. Because it's hot. If it's not hot, I'd say like yeah. six. Because they're probably four now. If you overcook it, it'll really dry out, which it's fine tasting like that too. But you know what you do though? If you were to spice it first, you spice it all up. You fold this plate in half and close it, and you shake it. Give it and a shake. It gets shake. everywhere. Bickety bam, you're done. Bickety bam. Okay, we're gonna throw those guys into the air fryer for probably about like I'm gonna check on her in five minutes. Yeah, that works. Okay. That was five minutes. The sizzle. The sizzle factor, yes. You take that out? Yep, push it. Pull it. It's pull it. Pull it. Pull, pull it, it and push it. Push it real. I can't with these fake nails. I can't do shit. Alright, dump it in the bowl. I can't with this nail. It's hard. These fake nails aren't good for much except looks. Don't let anyone fool you. All right, so I've just got a single serving here. Look how delicious those veggies are and the tomatoes. Oh, those are so good. Look at that. Look at it. Just look at it. Just look at it. So juicy and delicious. So this is my favorite way to cook you vegetables. You these juicy so much today. Juicy and moist. You said like 30 times It's each. meal prep day. Things are juicy and moist on Sunday. <laughs> okay, anyways, next up, we are going to do, all right, I wanted to share with you guys, using the same plate, because there wasn't anything raw in here. The other thing I love about the air fryer is cooking in their frozen foods. So anything you buy frozen that you would normally throw in an oven or a toaster oven tastes phenomenal in the air fryer. In particular, Trader Joe's cauliflower gnocchi. However, I'm all out of those, but what I do have are the stuffed gnocchi, which have like tomato sauce and mozzarella. So we're gonna cook those up. And this is what's great. If you need a quick go-to dinner when you come home from work, I've also got Asian veggie burgers. I got these from Aldi's. These are so good in the air fryer. The are they? The texture on them is Ooh, just... we need to go to Red Robins. I like their uh, black bean burgers. We have a gift card. Really? Yeah. We have a gift card for like everything. We do. So we're going to take the veggie burger. We're going to take some of these and we're just going to throw it in the air fryer. 400 degrees. Uh, 15 minutes? No, it won't need that long because it's a veggie burger. It's not, it's like you're basically just toasting it up. We're probably not even going to need 10 minutes on this. Yeah, I mean, you spray those because they're probably so, already kind of. Yeah, I'm not even going to spray these. We're just going to throw it in there and show you what it looks like when it's done. <laughs> they're going to be so disappointed when they see this. It's not going to look any different. <laughs> they're going to be so disappointed. I know, like, I feel bad. We're not sharing anything life altering, if Th anything. This is what we do. Everyone's like, Show me the recipe. Like, there is no recipe. It's there really movies. isn't. Put it in there. I mean, we've gone back and forth with buying a bigger air fryer because like- We use it every we day. We do. So be we can only fit so much volume in there right now. So that's why I'm doing it like meal by meal. But you know, you guys really invest in, like you should invest in this. I yeah. wish this was a sponsored video and I was working with Philips or and, Ninja, and, but and we're get not. some sort of affiliate. You know? I know. Like I wish I could hook you up with like a coupon code, but I don't have one, you guys. We bought it with our own cash but we've been using it for a year and a half yeah never looked back it gets used daily my sister waited forever to buy one she gets one she cooks everything in there yep. everything it's a time saver you just it's literally throw it in. in and you go do work right it's so easy so this is going in all right guys this looks like nothing special but you do kind of know when these guys are cooked since they're stuffed these flew open the splooge factor tells you it's done. So that's just a really quick way to throw in some frozen foods if you want a staple meal on hand. That's that. The last thing we're gonna show you is a newfound love from one of you guys. You told me to cook my bacon in the air fryer. Where have I been all my life? How did I not know about this? Only trick is you do need to clean the air fryer after. We, I only clean it like once a week, but after the bacon, it needs to get cleaned out. Let's be honest, bacon's a little bit disgusting, right? It's a little bit gross, but it tastes so good. So we're gonna take some center cut bacon, I'm gonna throw it in the air fryer, and I believe I only cook it for like five minutes, right? Yeah, five like, to six. Like 400 degrees? 
about that. Okay. And as Jason said, you definitely need to clean your air fryer afterwards because the grease does collect under there. So some air fryers may tell you not to cook it in there. I've had no problems, you know? It got a little smoky one time. Open the window if it smokes a little bit. We just cooked bit. it next to an open window. No big deal. Nothing's going to catch on fire, at least not yet. So we're going to go ahead and throw that in there. And if you want, cook your veggies in there with the bacon. And then it like flavors yeah. your veggies. You put, can throw them. Put the veggies down. Put food down first and put the bacon on top. Yes. So it like leaks into your food. You can cook multiple foods in there at once. I'm just kind of showing you individually because that's just what's going on. But I think that is going to conclude some of our air fryer favorites and go to's. I think we hit everything, right? It's I mean, easy. it's. I'm sure I like, said it like three times now. You're going to be disappointed. You're going to be like, wait. That's all I had to do? Yeah. I mean, I'm not cooking like a lasagna in there. This is just like basic stuff you're shoving in there and it cooks real quick and I just love the consistency of it. So that's it. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Make sure you are subscribed and hit the post notification bell so that you guys know each and every time I upload, I'm here two to three times a week. You can come hang out with myself, sometimes shreddy, shreddy. Shreddy Heasy makes a little appearance as well. Um, yeah, and be sure to comment below how mind blown you were from the air fryer video and if anything you learned from this video. It so changes up food though, like one more time. It's a game changer, these turkey this burgers. Is, it, these turkey burgers. Yeah, rotate that shit. Look at how crispy this Rotate is. it. It's like crispy, but it's like nice and juicy on the inside. Should I break it open for him? Yeah, you can do that, because I'm going to eat that. Look at that. It keeps there's nice... The, there's the inside of it. Nice and juicy. It looks familiar. It does look kind of familiar. <laughs> I'm actually going to eat a turkey burger wrapped in air fried bacon with veggies and potatoes. Potatoes. Boom. That's my dinner tonight, folks. So we're going to wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.